This is a little robot I entirely made and programmed on my own. And although I'm pretty proud of it, it really can't do much besides avoiding obstacles and detecting when it's stuck. So, I'm gonna move on to a much more interesting robot. This one, for example, behaves in a much more complex way. In fact, it is driven by a simulated C. elegans brain. Now, C. elegans is a worm, and with 302 neurons, it has one of the simplest brain in the animal kingdom. That allowed the Open Worm project to map every connection between these neurons, and consequently led to this awesome robot. Now, this is pretty cool, but with 90 billion neurons and a more diversified structure, our own brain is a completely different challenge. But still, that doesn't stop the Human Brain project from existing. This group of scientists aims at accurately modeling the human brain in order to be able to simulate it in a supercomputer. And they are really serious about it. The European Union chose them for being one of the most promising projects and are giving them a lot of founding. Believe it or not, they expect to have a working model within the next decade. Although it is unlikely that any computer will be able to run it then. They are often criticized for the fact that nobody fully understands the complexity of the brain yet. And nobody denies that. But they defend themselves by quoting Richard Feynman, physicist and Nobel Prize winner, who said, What I cannot create, I do not understand. So the main goal here is really not to make a thinking machine, but rather to make a workbench beneficial to a better understanding of cognitive malfunctions. Now, one basic element to achieve all of that is to get a human connectome. Connectome is only a fancy name for a neural map of all the connections into a brain. The appropriately called Human Connectome Project is working on this. They succeeded to map major pathways, but have yet to do so with every cells. Now, instead of waiting a few decades for a powerful and a supercomputer, why not make an actual synthetic brain that would not only emulate the brain, but imitates it in its very architecture? For example, instead of writing a piece of code that would act like a neuron, we would make a physical chip that does the same job. This is called neuromorphic computing. Well, this is the approach that took the Synapse program, which is backed by IBM and DARPA, just to name those ones. And they really seem to be in a good path as they use True North, a chip provided by IBM that contains 1 million electronic neurons connected together by 256 programmable synapses. And this is a really good start, even if at the end it still requires a connectome. And even if we overcome all these difficulties, how to make it learn something? How to put the right amount of information into this brain? Well, it seems like Google is working on this. And apparently, their plan is to find a way to make the brain learn by itself instead of us teaching it anything. No need to say such a brain would be quite different from us. So, currently, we are not able to make an artificial brain. But looking at the overall situation, it is safe to say that it will be the case in the near future. Now, let's say we succeeded to create a complete synthetic brain. Would it be conscious? While we still haven't solved the mystery of consciousness, current theories speculate that it is something that emerges from any complex enough system. In this case, nothing would prevent it from happening. And here is another question. As this would be a complete human brain and probably conscious, would it be ethical to study it? Interesting questions that we could have to answer sooner than we think. Hello you handsome stranger. Please click on this link to get access to my first video.